Whoa, 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 what are you doing? I'm so excited. This is our new trailer, our new solar mobile studio that we're gonna bring on the road so we can do our show from the road. Okay, why are you drilling holes in it? Because we're gonna put the solar on it today. Okay, slow down. What? Let's, let's. I got my caulking gun, I got my yeah, drill. That's good, that's good. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna test out the solar first. Uh huh. And then where, where are we gonna test it out? On the ground. Oh, okay. I know, I know that you're excited to put solar yeah, panels on the roof of this I'm thing, excited. but we should make sure that every piece of it's working before we start gluing and drilling and doing all sorts of crazy stuff, right? All right. Don't worry. Next, on Now You Know. This week's episode is sponsored by Blinkist. We just listened to the Simplify shortcast of Lower Your Expectations with Eric Fisher. Yeah, and I learned in just a few minutes with Eric, who has learned from talking to countless experts in productivity, about a life hack, I guess you'd call it, and a really good one at that. Now, you've probably heard us tell you about Blinks before. Right, you can think of a Blink as a condensed book. It's short, so you can either read it or listen to one in less than 15 minutes. But this shortcast is another cool service that Blinkist offers. What is it? You can think of a shortcast as a Blink for podcasts. So a short cast condenses a long podcast down into its key ideas. And so why did you like this Simplify short cast so much? Because I've got so much to do in my life. There are so many podcasts out there. How am I supposed to find the ones I'm interested in? Short casts let you quickly see if you're interested in the topic. Exactly. In the time it would take me to just get through like one regular podcast, I can absorb the key ideas in a short cast and then go listen to more if I find that person or topic super interesting. With Blinkist, you have access to over 3,000 titles, even when you're offline. And Blinkist also offers full-length audiobooks. Premium subscribers get special member pricing of up to 65% off the regular retail price. The first 100 people to use our link are going to get unlimited access for one week to try out Blinkist. You also get 25% off if you want to try the full membership. And the seven-day trial is completely free. You can cancel at any time during that period. Thank you, Blinkist. All right, so our friends over at Renergy sent us some solar panels, all the inverters, the whole kit I'm going to show you. It's really cool. Okay. And so we're going to put six of these panels up on the roof. Nice. And then let me show you inside the trailer. All right. Yo, come check out my crib. Yo, check it out. Look how spacious it is in here. That's awesome. Eight feet wide. Yeah, that's awesome. Six uh, Whoa. what happened? Where's the lights? Oh, there's a switch there. Oh, you know, it has to be plugged into a truck. What? Oh, it's 12 volt lights? Yeah. This isn't gonna work. It's too dark in here, man. <laughs> we, need, we need power. Well, yeah, look, this is the, the whole setup from, from Renergy. It's the Rego setup. Batteries, inverters, we're gonna show you how to do it. Right. We're gonna put the solar on the roof. And then this is gonna turn into our mobile studio. So you know how we sit on the set on Tesla Time News? Yeah. I'm not sure where we're putting that yet, but like I think it'll be up at that end. Nice. And then we'll have like lights and a desk and we'll be able to go on the road. Light and do camera action. Yes, all from here. A battery and solar panel? You got it. And it's a simple setup? I think so. All right, well, before we get started, let's make sure that everything works. Okay. Like the solar panels and everything, that we have all the pieces that we need. Good point. Before we're climbing around up on the roof. Good point, All yeah. Right. Can't really climb on the roof. You, you're right. Yeah. We'll Good. figure that out too. All right, let's go do it. All right, I'm super excited. In here is the solar panel. Let's take it out and okay. get going. Okay, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's great and all. It's just, I think that you really need to know what you're doing before you're setting up an off-grid solar system. Um, well, that's the whole reason why I talked to Renergy. This system is called the Rego system. Ready to say goodbye to the grid faster, ready to go, <laughs> ready to go. Rego is a simple to install, fully integrated solar power system with innovative components designed to work together seamlessly, powerfully, and safely. So it's already been thought through for us? Yes, we don't have to do, you know, norm, you're totally right. Normally a solar system means watching a lot of videos, which I did, buying a lot of extra cable and stuff, supposedly, and we're gonna see if this is true, this system should be pretty easy to install. Okay. Uh, so... I'm not saying we're not idiots and that we're not going to need to read some stuff, but in general, I think they've thought of it. Okay, so we don't need an electrical engineering degree and uh, no. 12 years experience wiring up houses and I don't think so. working on uh, wind turbines and stuff like that. You think I, that we're... I think we're good. Us to Let's, bumpkins is going to be able to... Well, that's out? why we're doing it. So okay. Let's find out. All right. Let's take it out of the box. Okay. Moment of truth. Whoa! Look at that. That is light. Look how thin that is. That is that's thin. Like, that's like thin as a dime. Holy smokes. And it bends. Look at that. Wait, so when you were saying solar panels, you meant flexible solar panels. Oh yeah, no, I mean, this isn't like your typical on the roof of a house. Wow. These are meant for this application. 
And look, the the connector is on the top. Yeah, really important. We can glue this down completely flat. Exactly, exactly. And That's look, awesome. Got all the connectors right on it, the male and the female. These connectors, they don't look like I can plug like a blender into this. No, no. I'm just getting a little skeezed out. Well, look what it says here. With significantly reduced install and connection time, choosing Rego means you're ready for your off-the-grid adventures in minutes instead of hours. Okay, so what do we need to do? It's intuitive to connect. The entire system can also be controlled by the Rego DC home app on your smartphone via Bluetooth. But what do we need to do now that we have the solar panel? Well, let's go get some of the other Rego components okay. and um, see what we have to do. Okay. All right, so normally with the solar system, uh, what makes it so complicated is that it is complicated. Renogy kind of made this easier because they came up with this, uh, what they're calling the system combiner box. Okay. And so this is going to kind of be the brains of the operation. And I think it's going to make this a whole lot easier. So we just plug everything into this and it worries about the rest. Yeah, let's go through the instructions. Oh, we got some stickers. Nice. So this doesn't even feel that heavy. All right. And it came with some, some screws, it looks like, for attaching to the floor. Look how well this is written. I wow. just, I know that a lot of us get stuff from China and it's like makes no sense or whatever, but the diagrams and the language here is just so easy to read. Even on the thing itself. Yeah, look at these uh, contactors and stuff. Like, But I mean, pretty easy. <laughs> Inverter, DC, DC And charger. look at this, they use Anderson connectors, which we used when we did the conversion of the MG. Yeah. Really well built, strong, easy to use. Yeah, easy to plug and unplug. Um, and then it looks like this is uh, for a fuse. Yeah, that's the 400 amp uh, fuse, it looks like. We have the charge controller. We have the battery port down over here. We have the DC-DC charger. What's the DC-DC charger for? If we were putting this into a, like a van life vehicle and we wanted to be running off the 12 volt battery in the vehicle, we could use this. Oh wow, so if you had like an RV, this system is meant to drop directly into an RV. Exactly. So putting it on a trailer doesn't even take advantage of all of this. Exactly, aspects. we're not using all of it. If we could get a 12 volt source, which I think we can do using like maybe like a wind turbine, we could have another yes. input of energy yep. and almost anything 12 volt yep. uh, you could be powering it from. So that's yep. awesome too. Yeah. Wow, and everything's got these cool fuse doors. I'm really impressed. Yeah, and all you need is a 13 millimeter wrench and a Phillips screwdriver to install this. Uh, so next, I think we need to get our Rego battery. Okay, let's do it. It's kind of big, kind of heavy. Look at that Anderson connector. Holy moly. And another instruction manual. Yeah, really nice instruction manuals. I love how this is packed. I know. Because, I mean, we got some of the boxes and they looked a little beat up, but... Yeah, I mean, because, you know, UPS, <laughs> they treat things mean. Whoa. Oh, this thing's heavy. Woo! Look at that. Holy moly. That is beautiful. Yeah. Look at how this is cast. I know. What is this on the top? This is metal. Uh, yeah, that's aluminum. Wow. And the sides, that's metal too. This is gorgeous. I know, really well done. Look at this, it tells you the battery levels, the battery status. And I think it's alive. Yep. See, it's booting up now. Wow, it's doing a whole boot up sequence. So We've got uh, 50%. 50% right now. So this is lithium ferrous phosphate, uh, 12 volt, 400 amp hours. And so that means that worst case, if this was in an accident or something, it's not gonna catch on fire. Exactly, they're very safe. That's the nice part about LiPo. And so we're reading in the instruction manual here, you could have multiples of these yep. and have a battery combiner box which would connect directly onto the end of this combiner box here. Correct. So this is an expandable system. Yep. And it's really easy because if we have one battery and then we go, you know what, we need another battery. Just get another, another battery. battery and the combiner box. And then you and then you can go up to, looks like three of these. Yep. And this is 400 amp hours, so that would get you up to 1200 amp hours. Yeah. Total, if you needed it. Beautiful connector here. And look, it connects Anderson right there. Yeah, so positive, positive, negative, negative. Yeah, this is another thing. It's really hard to screw this up. <laughs> All right, so we moved inside from yesterday and we've added another member to the team. Third generation, you can always use more help. Well, first generation, My dad. I'm third generation. That's true, you're third, I'm in the middle. All right. I should be taller. <laughs> yeah, it does kind of work in a downward yeah. slope. So yesterday, you remember we already hooked up the battery and the combiner box. We moved that inside here. Yep. I mean, it is raining today, that's why we had to move inside. But uh, we're gonna continue with the MPPT. And what is this, Jesse? Um, this is what we're gonna connect our solar panels to and it is going to help to charge up the battery. But why, can't, I just have a question, why can't we just take the solar panel, 
hook it directly to the battery. Well, the solar panel is going to be giving a varying amount of volts and amps depending on its solar coverage. And so what the MPPT controller is going to do is it's going to take the absolute best case scenario of the most amount of power that it can put into the battery and feed the battery, whatever that is. Okay. So it's like constantly trying to get maximize things. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's uh, see how this hooks up. All right. Now I noticed uh, in the directions. Yep that this is going to hook up to our combiner box. It's really nice. It's got the interesting connector and it's got two cables here. So that's great. Let's yep. do that first, maybe. Sure. And again, what I love about the system is that uh, there's really good directions. Everything is nicely diagrammed. Not one of those things where it's just like a sheet of paper. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is there's a bunch of different ways to hook the system up. We're using their um, all their stuff. Yeah. You could use your own battery. Oh, and that's why there's different ways to do it. But we're using their battery. So uh, it says basically that we're going to be hooking up to the Anderson connector and then the um, lithium battery. All right. So I'm going to be plugging in this Anderson connector into the charge controller, which is, of course, it's an MPPT charge controller. So that makes sense. So that is now plugged in. Now, if we come over to the charge controller. Oh, now I'm confused, Jesse. There's two possible places to plug it in. What are we doing here? Um, well, the nice thing about this is that they made it fairly simple. Um, there's Yes, there are two ways to plug it in. Um, but what they've done is have the solar side um, easily plugged in as a single unit and the battery as a different way. And so I don't even think that you could necessarily screw uh, this up, screw this up that easily, but we're going to do our best not to. So black goes in black and red goes in red. So that was easy. Okay. Um, and now it is flashing battery. Oh, cool. So it lets us know that that's connected. Now they gave us this really short wire, which has to go to our solar panel. Yes. Is, are we just stuck with that? I don't know. We checked all of the bags that we got and we don't seem to have any extra cables. Luckily, um, we've been doing a couple of solar projects and so we have some extra. And all these are is just, um, you know, a length of wire at the right gauge and then these connectors that you can put on the end. Can we ha take a moment here to talk about how to make these cables? Because I feel like this will be a part of your project where you're going to have to customize a bit. Yeah. And we learned a lot in the past few weeks when we got our solar panels. So what I first learned was you're going to look in the link down below for this kit from Amazon. Not that expensive. Um, I think it was like, wasn't it like 15 bucks or something? Yeah. Um, it comes with a crimper. Highly recommend that you use the crimper. It comes with a kit of a, a I don't know, like half a dozen of these uh, connectors. It comes with all the tightening tools and then it comes with a few connectors itself. So if you're doing a small project, this might take care of everything. And I want to take a minute just to gush about how much I love um, the solar connectors. I think that they are really great. Yes, yeah, so you're using a special plastic tool yep. that uh, depresses the little detents there so that you can pull this apart. Yep. So it's easier usually when it's on a big cable. I'm also going to put a link down below to solar cable because it did take me a while to figure out what was the right stuff. Mm -hmm. This way you'll get started. Usually good to get black and red. That way you can know what's positive and what's negative. So this is the connector for solar. And the nice part is it's an international standard. And in my opinion, I think it's really, really good. Um, what you do is you take your solar cable and you have a male and a female type of connector, which you're gonna crimp on the end. And so these fit together like so, electrically, and they fit together nice and tight, which is good. I'm not gonna put these together and so I can't pull them apart. But yeah, one goes in one side and the other goes in the other. It's really hard to mess up. Once those crimps are on, um, you slide on the end, which fits either side. So once you come in to tighten, you have your special wrenches um, that are designed to fit over one side and then fit over another. And this allows you to tighten down and you can't over tighten. It's a ratcheting mechanism. I think that- Yeah, it's um, really brilliant. It's foolproof. Really, really foolproof and nice. And so what we're gonna do is take some extender cables that we've already made and uh, hook those up to the rather short cable that they've given us. So that way we can put the solar panels wherever we want. Today, we're just gonna kinda lay the solar panels out on the ground um, because we don't wanna be drilling holes while it's raining. <laughs> All right, so the solar panels come with the connectors, male, female, really impossible to screw up. Uh -huh. We're going to put these outside. Um, well, first we'll hook them up, but then we'll put them outside to see if there's any sunlight that can be captured. Um, and we'll hook it into the system. So then what I'm going to do 
is very simply connect the proper side to each side here. Click. Click, so these are our extension cables. Then I'm gonna take this, plug it in here. Then I'll take the other end of our cables, make sure that it's not too tangled. And very simply, click. And click. All right, I'll put this in the sun. And we're already getting solar. It already knows that solar is connected. And then next thing we have to talk about is this little selector switch here. Uh, what's going on with this? So this is where you would select the type of battery. This Renology MPPT controller allows for basically you to charge up any kind of battery using solar. Yep. And the reason that that's important is different kinds of batteries want to be charged in different ways. Um, they're going to have different voltages and they're going to want to be charged either with current limiting or voltage limiting. Um, so that's basically the, the main differences here. So when you select a particular kind of battery, that's why it's important. And what's cool is you could put this into user mode and use the Renergy app to customize this controller for your battery if it wasn't one of the selected ones. Yep. All right, so we've put it on lithium because this is a lithium ferrous phosphate battery. Mm -hmm. So that's all set. All right, so we got the solar panel connected to the charge controller. We got the charge controller connected to the connector and we got the connector connected to the battery. Um, is it working? I think we need the app. Oh, okay. Uh, here's the Renergy DC Home app. Okay. Going to install that. Oh, by the way, I just had a question. Uh, we got the battery. Could we like plug our lights that we've been plugging into another battery into this battery? I don't think so. What we would need to do would be to hook up our, our inverter, which comes with the kit. Um, and that would basically be how we would take power out. So we, we actually, we could. I could uh, open this up. We can connect it and start power in our studio. All right, I'll, I'll log into the app while you do that. Excellent. I'll go read this. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the app uh, found my battery. Really? It says that it's 29.98% full. Okay. Um, and it shows a little graphic of the uh, battery there, which is pretty cool. Oh, cool. Lots of stats. Tells me how many amp hours is the max capacity and all that kind of fun stuff. Again, it's really nice. The inverter comes with a really nice manual. Uh, everything is easy to read, tells you what you need. And I'm gonna turn the wiring diagram over to our electrical engineer here. <laughs> okay, so. So this is the power inverter. Yeah, so explain this to me again. Why again, can't I just plug the lights right into the battery? The battery is 12 volts DC. Most things that you plug in are 120 volts AC. Oh, so this is inverting that from DC to AC. Yes. Ah, I gotcha. Why didn't we just listen to Thomas Edison? Keep everything <laughs> DC. Then we wouldn't need to do any of this. Yeah. This is flashing battery, which means that it's connected. And before we even had the solar panel connected, it was flashing. So it was getting power. I could add another device. Maybe it would find this. Because maybe it finds one device at a time or something. Could be. Now it's flashing red. Oh. Huh. It might be because we're connecting to it. Oh, now it's green. Cool. So we found the controller on the app as well. So now we have the battery and the controller hooked up. This is showing the MPPT and it's showing estimated state of charge, showing solar voltage 18.3 volts, solar amps is zero, solar power is zero watts. Tells us our total energy produced in kilowatt hours. Tells us that we're making 0.3, oh, 0.79 watts now. Wow, that's nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> I mean, it is a really overcast yeah. day. Yeah. But it's telling us our battery temperature, our controller temperature. This is really cool. You know. So uh, do you want to hook up some more solar panels to our string here? I kind of do. All right, um, my do only it. question before we get started, though, is uh, how do you do that? Because there's no, this is one wire. Well, this is a 100 volt MPPT. Mm -hmm. Each solar panel that you add is going to be roughly 12 volts. Okay. And that means that with six solar panels that we have, we have 72 volts. Oh, and this should be able to handle it. This should be able to handle it. No, but it. I guess my question was, sorry, I wasn't clear. I mean, how do you physically put another panel on this. We can put them all in series. So basically we'll just simply um, disconnect either the positive or the negative end on that end. Um, and just oh, and you can loop through? Connect them all together. Oh, cool. So that's what we should be able to do. And, so, and just to be clear, if we go series, we are adding the voltages. If we go parallel, we are maintaining the voltage. We're maintaining the voltage, adding the amperage. Gotcha. So if you know anything about parallel and, and series circuits, um, it's the exact same thing, except instead of a battery, it's a solar panel. All right, let's do it. Let's grab another panel. Told me to come out to the trailer, help him with something. Hey dad, where are you? 
Up here. What the? What are you doing? Well, I figured we wanted to test the solar like in real life conditions, right? Well, shouldn't we be plugging it in, making sure that everything's working? Yeah, we'll try it on the roof of the trailer. We won't glue it down or anything. We'll just uh, we'll lay them down. Okay. All right, let's do it. These are gonna fit nice. They're actually lower profile than the edge of the trailer. All right, looks like we're getting good sun, so now we gotta hook it up. So we're gonna be hooking up a positive to a negative. Pretty easy to do, hard to screw up. Look at that, boom, done. Positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative. All right, Jess, I'm ready for the female. So this is, it says positive. Yep. And then if you give me the other side. Okay, she's nice. in. Nice. All right, so it looks like we're getting some data. Um, I had to unhook two of the six panels because we over-voltaged. Um, basically, these panels, I believe, must be 24 volts? Something uh, like that, yeah. And basically, the Rego system, as they advertise it, has four panels. We asked for six because we were like, maybe in the future we can expand this. So four panels is going to be great. It's going to be able to give us uh, 800 watts peak. Mm -hmm. um, that would be if the sun was directly overhead and all conditions were perfect. So right now, the sun is very low. We're in the winter here. And it's morning. And it's, and it's the morning. So we're still getting 221 watts, 223. I think every moment it's going to be <laughs> slightly more as the sun keeps coming up. Um, but it's charging the battery, and we can actually see the battery over here is flashing, which shows that it's charging up. So that's good. I really love this app. I really love the fact that we know at all moments like what's going on. We don't have to just look at a flashing light because mm. um, on a lot of systems, you have to go walk over to this or something similar and that's the only way to get the info. Here you could be you know, in your house or driving your RV and you could still see how things are going. Yeah, so anywhere within Bluetooth range yeah. and you'd be able to see it. And yeah, so we haven't done any soldering. We haven't done any scary wiring. Well, and I did something wrong. I want to point out, I hooked up too many panels. It was an over voltage and instead of killing me or shocking me or breaking something, it just like was like, nope, can't do it. And told you what the problem was immediately so we could fix it very quickly. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to refresh this here. Let's see what we can get. Yeah, so we're making 240 watts of power. Nice. And I mean, it hasn't shown any kilowatts hours yet, um, but I think that's just because we've only really been plugged in for like five minutes. Yeah. I am really excited about this system. I, um, as much as we are, like we've done an MG conversion, so an electric vehicle conversion. And I mean, I've had solar panels on the roof for nine years. So you'd think like I'd be a complete solar geek. I mean, I love solar, but I don't know all the ins and outs of them. And this was a great way to get me started. If I didn't want to go any further, I could still have a solar powered RV. Yeah. And I mean, as it stands right now, that's about a four kilowatt hour battery. Mm -hmm. And we have 800 watts on the roof. Um, I think we're probably going to be able to pull in at least 400 watts. Um, and so that should be able to charge us up within about a day or so. Yeah. Especially if we have better sun, um, that's gonna help out a lot as well. I mean, we're in New England and it's winter. If you were in Arizona and it was summer, like you'd have no problem filling up that battery. Yeah. Oh, and I just wanna say, Jesse, and to everyone watching, if you have questions, comment down below what those questions are. We will try our best to get them answered for you. All right, so next episode, we're gonna get our inverter hooked up and yeah. that's going to allow us to uh, actually power stuff off of our battery. Yeah, now that's gonna involve a little bit more stuff. We're gonna have to hook up some kind of sub panel. Um, we're gonna have to hook up some outlets so we can plug things in, and that means doing some electrical. Some of you, that's fine, and you're used to doing that. Others, you'll get an electrician to do that. It's really not a big deal. Yeah. All right, we'll see you next time. Now you know.